Nowhere to escape in between these walls. Time is getting late. Wondering where you are. Need to get it straight. Cause I think I'm falling hard. I'm falling, I'm falling. So save me. Just save me. Hear my alarm. It's calling, it's calling. I'm waiting for you. Don't let me down, 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 down. I'm waiting. Good morning, everybody. So, we are in Statesville, North Carolina. Ironically, this is where my home terminal is. And the creative parking game in this rest area is strong. And I can still get out just fine. But man. These two guys are parked in the exit. And I still gotta make that pivot. I just cleared the truck behind me. One problem with this rest area is that it's a uh, left-hand rest area, which means I got to bring 44,000 pounds of peanuts up to near highway speed and merge into the hammer lane. I think it's 12.30 in the morning. There's not much traffic. 79.5 miles ahead. Take exit 32 I-81 North. That's where your merge lane comes in handy. What you are supposed to do is run the merge lane its full length, then merge, if safe. A lot of people cut that merge lane short. And they'll get frustrated with you if you run the merge lane its full length. So once we get done with this load, uh, we're taking this to Hershey in Stewart's Draft, Virginia. Get done with this load, pick up an empty, go and get it washed out. Let's see about getting the truck washed while I'm at it. And uh, then we're gonna run over to Mount Crawford, Virginia. Pick up another load. And run that to uh, Mount Sterling, Illinois. Shut off the high beams. 
Jackass! I legitimately can't see behind me. I know I'm probably... Yeah. <laughs> He's about half a mile behind me now. But i just now able to see in the lane next to me. Good grief. I understand slow down for conditions. Okay? Totally get that. You've heard me talk about driving to conditions. But it's not even really raining. The road barely qualifies as wet. That that's ridiculous. It's almost painful watching this guy trying to back this truck. That poor clutch. Poor clutch, the drive shaft, the transmission. He's got a straight shot. Just ease out on the clutch and give her some throttle. Let it ease into the spot. But instead, it's this herky jerky. It's rough. <laughs> That's the simplest way to put it. Because the automated manual has come into the industry and become pervasive. Very few drivers know how to drive a manual transmission anymore. Turn right. It's sad. Getting a little tight back here. Good grief. This, uh, hmm. This might be a little problematic. Uh, we'll have to see. Oh, oh, that's a hole. Yeah, I might have enough room to crank. First things first, let's double check, make sure it's empty. As you're walking along here, checking for any damage. Maybe I'll get lucky and have a couple of load bars in here. Well, it's relatively clean. Better than that one. That one smells lovely. Now for the interior inspection. I covered this in my pre-trip videos. 
but you're looking to see if there's any interior damage making sure the chutes are in good condition I have not started the process of getting the reefer running because I haven't checked the oil yet I haven't checked anything this trailer will be getting a washout You know, shoots in good condition. All the rivets are in place. Not seeing any damage to the interior. There's no gouges, no holes. I would hope not. This is a brand new trailer. Or relatively brand new. As you're going through here, look at your welds on the floor. Make sure you're not seeing any cracks. One of the things about being a driver, if you're doing your proper pre-trips, is you get to learn some things about metallurgy and welding. Not necessarily how to do welding, but how to inspect welds. Make sure that they're in good condition. This is where a bright light comes in handy. Because you can read the reflection of the light Make sure there's no obvious cracks. Because a crack in a weld, with the kinds of weight that we deal with, can and will quickly spread. But I'm not seeing anything that I need to be concerned about in here. Man, for a brand new trailer, Somebody's beating the crap out of our trailers. Probably from a skid rubbing against the inside of the trailer. Well, that works. That'll pop free when I rock the trailer. Key note here I'll be locking those pins before I hook up. <sighs> Uh oh, that tire's flat. <laughs> uh, came right off the bead. Okay, we aren't taking this trailer. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the one next to it. Ow. I see cords in there. That's uh, problematic. Oh, uh, that tire's toast. Well, that's a problem. Uh, can't quite tell. Yep, there's uh, there's an air gap there. That trailer's out of service. Well, on to the next one. Quite the ripple in that rub rail, too. 
Uh, I'm at the uh, Hershey plant in Stewart Strap, Virginia, and I needed to write up two trailers that uh, I was I was in the process of pre-tripping for a, an empty trailer, and I found two trailers that are sitting here that need to be put out of service. This one, this one's empty. And uh, just to let you know, when I was pre-tripping to get this, there's two other trailers over there that are out of service. I've already called Schaefer to get repairs done. Okay, I'm just letting you know. Uh, do you want me to give you the numbers so if anybody tries to take them, you can let them know that there's a road call out on them? No, but if you got, they still have tags on them, or even the yard jockey will catch them with tags when they come through. Yeah, because there's no tags on it. One needs to go to a trailer shop for body work. Well, there's a couple of them down there that's got the same bent. We don't, we don't we're not supposed to even accept them. The company that belongs to us come and get them. Right. What's the first name? William. Last name? All right, good to go. All right, thank you. Yeah. 